of 92. In their final match on Friday, then they will qualify for the semi-finals. This is the situation in Group B. Pakistan already assured of winning it with 20 points, already through to the first semi-final. And England now with 12 points, having moved ahead of the West Indies. And the run rate between the two of them, well, it's uh, down to fractions. Changed as Robinson and Gooch, Assi, Gatting, Lamb, Embury, Downton, De Freitas, Foster, Small and Hemmings. And Sri Lanka, lineup Mahanama, Ravi Ratnayaka, Gura Singer, Madugala, Mendes, Roy Dyers back in the side, Arvinda De Silva, Demel, Jagannathan, John, and Anura Siri. The main omission is Ranatunga, who is injured with a pulled hamstring. The umpires are David Archer from the West Indies and Kaiser Hyatt from Pakistan. Toss was won by Sri Lanka. A batting first. David Archer, the West Indian umpire, says play and throw the first ball of the match. Philip Freitas to Mahanama. Sri Lanka pleasantly off the mark. Beautifully timed shot by Mahanama. Full pitch on next jump. And this is the first time that Sri Lanka have had the chance to back first in the Reliance Cup competition. Ravi Ratnayaka is now promoted to open the batting. Dropped him. And that's England's first chance down. His first over to Freitas the bowler. Ravi Ratnayaka batting and Graham Gooch. The second slip. Now Gooch seems to have hurt his hand there. And uh, I have split the webbing. Let's take a look at that. So Gooch comes off with uh, an injured hand. And Start of the ninth over. The fate is to Mahanama. A wide signal there, but... Uh, I'm sorry if you're a batsman and later in the innings that would have been just about the right place for it to be bowled. And that's out, a straightforward catch to John Ember at slip. So it's called it for, for Sri Lanka. And I'm uh, caught John Ember at Baldi Freitas for 14. So oh. 23 for 1 and we're in the ninth over. Good delivery from De Freitas, who's just held up and bounced a little bit. Straightforward catch to John Embury, and quite a good viewing ground for slips here with some good side screens. That's the small to start the 10th over. The shout for LBW there, and yes, he's been given out. That right Nike uh, LBW ball small. Go on 25 now for two wickets. Delivery from Small to the left-hander. Pitching on off stump, straightening up. Not far forward at all. Really little doubt about that, although umpire Kaiser Hyatt took his time. So that's the second wicket to fall. Ravi Ratnaika, LBW, Gladstone Small for seven. And Sri Lanka, 25 for two. New batsman Roy Dias, who's one of three changes in this Sri Lankan side. Paul Jarvis on the field at the moment. Graham Gooch had a slight dislocation at the tip of his third finger. Had to leave the field, came back on for a couple of overs, but then had to go off again. And at the moment, Paul Jarvis is still fielding for him. Malto Dyer. And again, I think that could well have been an edge. Then he cut it straight through to the keeper and there was a shout from one or two of the close fielders. Certainly a comfortable chance if that was an edge. First bowling change of the morning. Neil Foster replacing Philip De Freitas. Five overs, one maiden, one for 13. Oh, that's a fine stroke by Dyer. Foster just over pitching a little and a beautiful on drive. No need to bother running for that. 
perfectly fine stroke. Another depth touch there from Dyer. And the Oscar is running quickly, which uh, should not depress England too much at this stage because England also want to ensure a, a high run rate. But that's very nicely played by Dias. Roy Dias, 16 not out in the 17th over. Neil Foster, the bowler. Beautifully timed. Really was a lovely shot by Roy Dias. And up comes the 50, 51 for no wicket, for 51 for two, the Sri Lankan score, 50 up off 106 ball. The Hemmings to bowl for the left-handed Kurusinger. Oh, cracking shot. Kurusinger finds the gap on the offside through the covers and that's for us. His first four, that's 62 for two, and we're getting worse, that was uh, good batting. Yes, I don't think you'll see many better strokes on that all day. Eddie Emmy is just a fraction short, and you want to think I'm making really a little bit of room, timing the ball perfectly, and uh, that really was a glorious stroke. The 25th over, Eddie Emmings over the wicket to Dyer. He's got a sweep there, where to square leg. And that certainly picked run signal. Certainly beautifully timed. The first six of it. Great bit of timing this. On the half volley and just drifting down leg side. Several rows back into a very enthusiastic crowd, and that's the 50 partnership coming up out of a total of 75 for two, and that 50's come off 92 balls. And again, that's a glorious shot. Hemming's pitching a little bit short, a bit wide, and you're thinking of again tucking that to his favourite area on the offside. Going to be now to continue round the wicket. You're a single left-hander with six men on the leg side. There's a chance there. Paul Jarvis, substitute fielder, home for Graham Gooch. You're a single tried to cut that, and the ball just carrying to square on the offside. Well, England being made to pay for not taking chances, and they desperately want to break this stand. That's going just about knee height to Jarvis. Remember now over the wicket to the right under Roy Dias. Dias down the wicket. And he's just cleared glass and small at long off. Just a yard too far to make it a catch. But a beautifully struck shot. Well, shot of the morning. Beautiful footwork. Spread over extra cover, Gladstone Small never really threatening that catch. There's going to be a change of bowling then at the commentary box end. Neil Foster replacing Eddie Atkins. And that's 100 up for Sri Lanka in the 31st over. Come up 186 deliveries with the acceleration shown by the fact that the second 50 has come up just 80 deliveries. Well, Dyer's again playing beautifully off his legs there, picking Neil Foster up two mid wicket and four more runs. The runs coming at a much quicker rate now. And again, that. Early miss of Dias when he was only one. It's proving to be very expensive. Now 
Mount Lotrex. Dias onto his 50 with two sixes and five fours. We're in the 32nd over now. Philip De Freitas is bowling to Gura Singer. And a really attractive partnership building up between these two Sri Lankan batsmen. Extremely dangerous for England. Oh, there's a one out on here. Gatting throws, off come the bales, and oh, tragedy for Sri Lanka, and a moment of extreme relief for England, who was so much under pressure in this fine partnership, and what a sad end for Guru Singer. His call, he hit the ball straight down behind the bowler, and Roy Dias wanted nothing to do with that run at all, but a marvellous partnership of 88 between Dias and Guru Singer. But the third wicket falls, and the score now, Sri Lanka, 1 1 3 4 3. All this really was bad cricket on Roy Dyson's part. You can see him just looking the same way as the other batsman. And Gurusinga did the full length of the pitch. They had to go completely back again. And really, that's pretty bad cricket. It was Gurusinga's call, and Dyson should have been available for the call once he called him. Very poor cricket there by Sri Lanka. And a vital breakthrough for England because those two really were looking in particularly good form. And the new batsman is uh, Dulip Mendes. Superb shot. That was always going to be Foster. It was a uh, tremendous power behind that shot from Dulip Mendes. And that's his way of getting off the mark. It's a very attractive one. Four more runs to Sri Lanka. Score now moves on to 119 for three. Bowled him. Very well bowled by De Freitas. And uh, a little strange innings that by Dilip Mendes. Just batting away on leg stump, trying to force with the offside. But the ball came back up the seam. And so, so Dilip Mendes is bowled by De Freitas for nine. We're in the 36th over then, and Ranjan Madukala comes to the crease. Brilliant shot. I mean, that's so typical of all we've seen from Roy Dyer this morning. Effortless, just the swaying of the line by the England bowler, and the timing perfect. Yes, his third six, there was nothing muscular about it, timing, just waited and flicked. That's gone many a mile, out of the ground. No doubt about that, that was a tremendous strike by Ranjan Madhubala. And it went straight out of the ground here at Pune. They may not get that ball back. It went uh, over the tin sheeting at the side, in, into the trees. Yes, great hit. And really, with seven overs all but that one first ball of the 44th to go, Salenka will be looking to add 60 or 70. Thank you very much. Well, just once too often, it was Downton's first bit of luck of the day. It was Hemmings, first piece of luck, certainly. And uh, Roy Dias goes. He had his luck, he was dropped at one, but has played a sensational innings for Sri Lanka. That's no exaggeration. We have seen the most elegant and punishing stroke play. But in the end, it was Dias, stumped by Downton, and bowled by Hemmings for 80. New batsman, Arvinder de Silva. It's in the air. It's caught, well caught. Jarvis, well caught. And he'll need that confidence. He dropped one earlier on, but that was very nicely caught indeed. Going quickly and low. And well done, Eddie Hemming. So Madugala has been caught by Jarvis, bold Hemming, 22. And the score, 177 for six. Good effort by Madugala. Very little he could do, but uh, this is how it ended.
nice catch because it was hit fairly flat. It's arrived at a fairly uncomfortably low position where he's picked it up nicely. For two for De Silva. And he's been joined by the new batsman from the Santa de Mel. That's in the air. That's caught. De Mel went for naught and Alan Lamb out there turns and cheers at his fans in the crowd. Amazingly popular man out here, Alan Lamb. He's followed the old traditions of Barrington's and Craig's and how much they love him. But Lamb caught that very simply. So De Mel being caught by Lamb for naught off the bowling of Hemmings. And it's 180 now for seven. And Sri Lanka letting things slip, but all credit to England. They stayed in there fighting, even though it hasn't been one of their best performances. And this is the end of Hemmings' spell. A third wicket. And a nice, well judged outfield catch by Lamb. Not easy because looking into the high, hot sun, made no mistake. New batsman is uh, Jagannathan. Oh, bad feeling again there. 200 up. Hemmings it was who made some ground to his left at deep fine leg. The ball is running past and the outfield is bouncy. Best uh, not to be too unkind, but four valuable runs to... Sri Lanka, who are now 201 for seven. What a hit. Beautiful catch, but Robinson's over. Six runs given. Well, you certainly cannot fault Tim Robinson, nor indeed can you fault Jagannathan, the batsman who struck Embry for a superb six at the mid-wicket. 2.15 for seven, last ball of the Sri Lankan inning. Robinson well picked up, beautifully picked up by Robinson. Two runs to the silver, and that completes the Sri Lankan innings, 217 for seven, off their 50 overs, and that, I would say, has been a most difficult and complicated morning for England in the field. In fact, Sri Lanka, of the last 10 overs, scored 74 runs. And so Sri Lanka's an innings of considerable promise in the middle order there, with that partnership of 88 between Guru Singer and Roy Dias. Guru Singer run out for 34, and Dias a brilliant innings, in fact, of 80. England didn't really help themselves. They dropped four catches, two by Paul Downton standing back. Not their best performance, but of course the difficulty is of meeting a side and beating a side, which you are supposed to overcome quite simply. In the last 10 overs, Sri Lanka scored 74, and they ended up with 2-1-7 for seven. England bowling, the most economical, small, one for 33, and Foster North for 37, right through to the most expensive, was Eddie Hemmings, three wickets for 57. So 218 required at a run rate of 4.36. We'll join the England innings at the first ball, the first over, and Ravi Ratnayaka is boring to Graham Gooch. And that's four runs. Friendly full toss. I don't think Graham Gooch will show too much discomfort. All the deliveries are like that one. Oh, that was well bowled. That's certainly quite a bit of movement away there, late and off the seam, and Gooch joined to the shot and definitely playing a missing now. Yes, there was as much movement with this delivery as any in the day. Swung just before pitching and then seemed away even more. John now to continue to Robinson. Well, 
Well, that's a fine stroke by Robinson, short of the length, a little bit of width there, and crash that away just behind point for four runs. This time Robinson doesn't quite time it, but still the outfield's lightning fast. That beats little Don Anura Siri down the deep square leg boundary and four runs. Perfectly good shot. Not quite off the middle of the bat, but Tim Robinson can settle for that. The score now moves on and England are 36 without loss and we're in the 10th over. Change in the Sri Lankan bowling. Off goes Ravi Ratnayaka, and on comes Santa Demel. Well, you can hardly blame the fielder. It goes so quickly across this outfield. It's uh, muddy and uneven, but rolled hard. That's Kurupu, the substitute fielder down there at fine leg. Four more runs to Gooch. Gooch is now 20. And the England score moves on very pleasantly. Now 46 for no wicket. They're chasing 218 to win this match. John now to Graham Gooch. In the air, might so easily have been caught. It went to the left hand, the strong hand of little Don Anura Siri. And that looks very catchable, in fact. Failing with. Yes, certainly. He seemed to take off a little bit late and didn't time his jump just right. I think if he'd just held his jump a fraction longer, he would certainly have got both hands for that, but certainly a very good chance. Demel continues his third over now. Well, to Robinson. That's well placed. They won't catch that one. Yes, they will. No, they won't. <laughs> Four runs. This is Jagannathan to Gooch. Gooch going for the sweep again, and this time bisecting the two fielders. One just behind square and one at straightish mid-wicket, and that one going dead square for four more runs. for Graham Gooch and England move on to 103 for no wicket so a great reply here by these two they've been absolutely everything right Sri Lanka make a change of bowling now bringing on another left arm spinner Don Anura Siri yeah. <laughs> and that's a glorious stroke there by Robinson moving down the pitch into out the ball over extra cover and four runs Yes, that's just a shot, Ray, and when you work it out in geometrical terms, the idea is to play along the line of the ball, these left armers coming in from wide around the wicket, and Tim Robinson hitting it back down the line over the covers. And that's Tim Robinson's 50. He's also made six boundary hits. And that's four more to Graham Gooch again, sweeping the ball and the score moving on now to 117 for no wicket. And 23 overs completed. That's a Gooch. Well, that was a brutal shot. Tremendous. Outside the off stump, sweeping hard that big bat of his, the ball going in front of the square. Yes, and 24 runs coming from the last two overs. That just shows how the batsmen are accelerating. And again, Robinson making room for himself and cutting away, and fielders not bothering to chase it, really. Very, very quick outfield, and no chance at all of catching that. Just saying how well they were playing and 
Robinson played that stroke a few overs ago and didn't play it very well then and certainly didn't play it very well on that occasion. He swept without getting anything in front, no legs or anything else and he played the penalty ball by hitting across the line there. So that's Robinson ball, Jagannathan for 55. But certainly he's given England a great start. The score is 1-2-3 and that's the first wicket to fall. And we're in the 24th over. The man coming to the middle now is Bilafe. And there's a catch, yes. Uh, Goose, Jack, just play that casually away on the leg side. And Jagannathan following through, taking a lovely diving catch. That's the second England wicket to go down. That's Graham Gooch, Cotton Bowl, Jagannathan for 61. And the England score now on 1 3 2 for 2, and we're in the 28th over. It was a good catch because Gooch was aiming this away leg side. Got to the leading edge. There he goes. Good low catch. To his natural left side, two wickets gone, 123 for no wicket they were, now 132 for two. Enough good batting to come with Gatting now, Mike Gatting, the captain, joining Bilassi. Mike Gatting off the mark straight away. He really just work the ones well. Whenever you see him batting he always gets about 25 in 25 balls it's not by hitting boundaries it's by working one oh that's a great shot and that's where the left armers really hate being hit because that's where they should be hit mike guiding down the pitch and the flat bat through the covers beautiful shot <laughs> more sweeping and that's racing away that's gone fine and that's four runs that's a lovely shot and a beautiful stop by Madugala And a beautiful stop by Madugala. Such a difficult thing to achieve that. Running, but also having to curve inside the rope as he went. And some delicate footwork. Three runs to Mike Gatting. A superbly placed shot. To Mel to Gatting. Oh, yes. Oh, yes right into space absolutely no chance the fielders at all getting lovely shot for him 199 the score is now thirty-six now mike getting That's one more. The 200 comes up, and the last 50 coming off 45 balls. Ravi Ratnayaka to Mike Gatting. And that two hits the gap, and I think Pakistan, uh, Sri Lanka, a little bit tired. Uh, Six runs to win, Mike Gatting still out there with Bill Affey. And it's a tired and demoralized Sri Lanka. We're now going about the business of bowling and fielding. Ravi Ratnayaka running away from us, Gatting on strike. Four runs. I'm not certain that the fielder at mid-on really wanted to know that. He went like a rocket jack. I think that was the David Gabor, wasn't it? It uh, suddenly from along the ground. Didn't quite get head height, but certainly got above kneecap height. Marvellous shot. 
all timing. Two runs to win now, England. Demel doesn't bother to go back, just turns in off a short run, both Afi down leg side. Wide calls. Oh dear, so one more to win now for England. The win will be by eight wickets if Afi and Gatting see this one out. Gatting's on 46 and Afi 38. One to win, scores are level. That's it. And Bilassi says, I'd rather like two. So he, they'll go through for two. Bilassi goes up to 40. And England, according to us, are now 319. England are rather 290. <laughs> We have frequent hesitations of so many figures and scores being shouted out on the ground. No one knows quite where they are. They shake hands now. And so, yes, we have a victory for England, 219, for the loss of two wickets. And so England win by eight wickets. So England's success based on a very sound, attractive opening partnership of 123 by Robinson and Gooch. And then the follow-up, Gatting and Assey just picking off the singles, pressing for the twos. Gatting 46 not out and Assey 40. The final total 219 for two. The bowling, well, one success for Sri Lanka only. Jagannathan got two wickets for 45. And the man of the match was Graham Gooch. I must say I thought Roy Dias for his 80 was rather unlucky in this adjudication. So England win by eight wickets. They won four out of their six qualifying matches and go safely into next Thursday's semi-final at Bombay. They beat Pakistan in Pakistan. West Indies 258 for 7, Pakistan 230 for 9, West Indies winning by 28 runs. And so the final positions in Group B look like this. Pakistan win the group with 20 points, England are second with 16 points, West Indies third with 12, although they have the best run rate in that group. One match played today in Group A, Australia beating Zimbabwe by 70 runs. Australia 266 for 5, Zimbabwe 196 for 6. Oswald, the beaten finalists in the very first...